What we have here is a Behringer S16. This is a stage box that you use to connect to a Behringer X32. Every one of these jacks has a push pin that springs back and in it, it locks the XLR into place so that you can't inadvertently pull it during service or, or whatever you're doing. Unfortunately, the design of the spring mechanism in here is subject to failure. So that's what we have here. We have one that wasn't able to get pulled out. So I had to disconnect the cable in order to close up for after Sunday service. So if you go to pull on this and it doesn't come out, you know there's something wrong. And, and what some people will do is they will maintain tension on this, pulling it, and then push that pin. And what happens when you do that? is you bend the spring mechanism so that it no longer works. You flatten out the portion that's supposed to be able to push down. And that's probably what happened with this one. So one important thing for, for your team, your volunteers, and anybody is to know that when, when they put the cable in, if they want to remove the cable, they have to push the pin in all the way and remove. You can't begin removing and then push the pin because that's how it breaks. I did that because I'm getting ready to remove all of the springs from these so I don't have that problem again. We set up and tear down every Sunday. I don't want to have to fuss with that <laughs> during tear down. So I'm going to show you how to tear this thing down and remove those clips. So it starts off there's one, two, three, four, five, six machine screws on the top. Use a number one Phillips bit screwdriver. So three screws on the top, two screws on either side, which I've already removed. I recommend a magnetic parts holder. You get them free a lot of time at Harbor Freight. All right, once the top is removed, very important, you're dealing with sensitive electronics. Get yourself a grounding strap. Make sure you've got good contact with bare metal. The paint's already worn off on here, so I am getting contact. All right, this is the super easy part. If, if you were lucky enough or blessed enough to have a failure on one of the top rows of the XLRs, then removal is relatively simple. Let me readjust this camera. Okay, so camera's in position. You'll want to push on the XLR, push on the spring pin in the back, find the hole. I don't know if you can see it, but right there. That hole, this is what holds the spring pin in place. So you rock it back a little bit, not a lot of pressure. Do not use a lot of pressure. All right, I'll show you what that spring pin looks like. Spring pin looks like this. Where's my scribe? There it is. All right, right there is the hole. That, that you're gonna pull in at. These are the barbs that are holding it in place. This is what your push pin should be depressing. If you have the problem, then this, this little angle up here is laid flat. So you wanna get your scribe in there and take the top of this and push it down. You need to assist your push pin. So, you're pushing, you're pressing, you need to get your scribe in there and rock it down as you are going backwards with it, all right? And that's it. And that pulls straight out and you have your broken pin. I'll show you the other one side by side so you can see the, see the difference between the two. See how one of them, the spring is nice and high, this one? Yeah, so that's the problem.
Okay, so this is going to be super easy to do all of them. Let's see if I can get them all in here and knock them out real quick. As long as long as you don't have an XLR in there, it comes out fast. So you got one. Just rock it in there, pull it out. One pin. Rock it in, pull it out. Another pin. Nice and easy. Doing this, you're gonna remove the potential of a stuck XLR. Now I know some some people who are experienced with the uh, backstage action are gonna say, "Hey, what about if somebody trips on a cable and yanks the cable out?" Well, that's easy. show you how easy that is see this that's a nice little velcro strap I take the whole cable bundle all the cables coming from here with a little bit of strain relief sag down come over and loop around this nice and tight so if somebody trips on the cable they're gonna take the whole stage rack down before they unplug and we have a pretty heavy stage rack so it's not coming down so that was easy if your problem was on the top row. If your problem is on the, the next eight channels, I'll show you how to take that out. You've got one, two machine screws that are holding the board in place. There's a ribbon that you'll need to disconnect here. And then of course, every one of these jacks has two screws that have to be removed. I'll start with the ribbon. It's a very, very sensitive ribbon. Let me try to zoom in on it. Yeah, there we go. You just lift up on the tab, on the black tabs on the side. To, they just lift straight up. A little snap, not a lot of force. And then this ribbon just slides out. You see how very thin it is. Be very, very careful not to ruin it. Anybody who's worked laptops before knows how, how delicate these are. All right. And you come and uh, start start unscrewing. Okay, all the screws on the front are removed. Now to remove the two machine screws that are holding the board in place. I keep those in when removing the front panel rows because that's that's the only thing keeping it in. If that's not in place, then then your front panel screws, the, the jacks get, get floppy and you stand a chance of messing up your solder joints. Screw and a washer. And very gently, of course, as with, with anything with small electronics, you just lift, pull back, and rock down to get past your the push pins. Even though they're they're no longer serving a purpose, it's more of a pain to take them out than it's worth. And you have access to your bottom row, and just like with the top row, if your XLR is stuck, you've got to get in on the top side of that spring and push that spring down in order to release that barb from locking that cable in. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, and yank all these out. Now how easy is that? You've got free XLRs. All right, reassembly, the opposite of disassembly. Put your card back in. Being careful not to overstress this cable because it's just about as important as the thin ribbon cable. When you put the card back in, be very careful of the red LEDs that display your phantom power. You can, you can bend them 
and potentially break the solder joint and render them okay <clears throat> cards lined up these holes are lined up screws go back in Not a lot of pressure on this. You don't want to, don't want to crack your board. So, two, two fingers on the on the top of your screwdriver should be plenty of pressure. At this point, you can put your ribbon cable back in. Very gently raise raise your uh, your locking tab for this cable. Set it in place. It'll only fit one way. You can't put it in off center. It just won't go in. So once you see it enter, push down on the sides of the black tab. Not a ton of pressure, but you do need to feel it kind of lock in place. That's easy there. The remainder is going to be your, your uh, 16 screws on the top row here. I like to start by putting screws in the middle. not locked down all the way. All your screws are in. Make sure you put your machine screws in to hold the card in place. Make sure your ribbon cable's tight. Make sure this isn't going to get caught up in the top when you put the top back on. You can go ahead and disconnect your wrist strap. Put your top back on. Slides into place nicely. <clears throat> Grab your machine screws. Remember nice and loose first, just in case they don't line up perfectly. Just like with the with the jack screws I don't like to do more than two fingers on the handle because I definitely don't want to strip them out because you never know if you'll have to open this back up to replace a fuse or anything else for that matter if you get a power surge the fuse is in a power block right in this area so this still has to come off. And there you have it. Stuck XLR repair on the Behringer S16. Thanks for watching. Check out this YouTube channel for videos of worship experiences, uh, songs that Angelique Markinson is releasing, and, and potentially other repair videos coming for general church equipment in the future. Y'all be blessed.